It has only actually been a little over two years since Sunderland were a Premier League club, although it feels like an awful lot longer. The Black Cats were relegated from the Premier League in 20th place in the 2016-17 season, suffering a second consecutive relegation, down into League One in 2017-18, and losing a playoff final last season. Despite the short period of time that has passed, the personnel has almost entirely changed at the Stadium of Light. In fact, not a single player included in this 11 is still with the League One side now. We have previously done videos like this for Aston Villa's relegated 2015-16 side, Hull City's relegated 2016-17 team, and Newcastle United's relegated 2015-16-11. Subscribers to the channel and viewers of those videos will be familiar with the format by now, but for those of you who are not, I'm going to take a look at the 11 players who played most frequently in each position for Sunderland in the Premier League in the 2016-17 season, and take a look at where those players are now. I will also take a look at one or two interesting squad players at the end, if there are any. Here is Sunderland's relegated 2016-17-11, where are they now? Jordan Pickford, Everton It's been a whirlwind few years for former Sunderland shotstopper Jordan Pickford. The 2016-17 season was his first as a regular at Sunderland, and despite the Black Cats getting relegated, Pickford impressed. The following summer, Pickford joined Everton for a potential £30 million, becoming the third most expensive goalkeeper of all time, and Everton's second most expensive signing ever at that time. He has since established himself as England's number one, being the hero, in England's 2018 World Cup shootout success against Colombia, but has also made one or two high-profile mistakes for the Toffees. Pickford is a goalkeeper who seems to run high on emotions, he has great reflexes and distribution, but just needs to add a touch of composure and calmness to his game. At the age of 25, he's still young for a goalkeeper, and there's no reason why he shouldn't be able to improve. Billy Jones, Rotherham United Former England youth team international Billy Jones has both climbed up the leagues as a player, and then tumbled back down them. Having begun his career with Crewe, Jones joined Sunderland in 2014. He played 20 Premier League games at right-back for the Black Cats in the 16-17 season, which was more than anyone else, but it was also his final season with the club. Following 12 months out of the game, Jones returned to football in a move to Rotherham United in the summer of 2018. Rotherham were relegated in Jones' first season with the club, meaning he's now back in League One for the first time since 2007. Lamine Kone, Strasbourg Lamine Kone joined Sunderland from Lorient in January 2016 for an undisclosed fee, and within a couple of weeks, he played a pivotal role in a 1-0 win over Manchester United after his effort went in via David De Gea's back. That would be about as good as it got for Kone, who excelled in his debut half campaign before telling David Moyes he wanted out the following summer. He later had a change of heart, signing a new five-year deal, but the Black Cats were relegated the following season. He played 26 times in the Championship as the club were relegated yet again, but spent last season on loan at Strasbourg. The Ivorian International made that move a permanent one in the summer just gone, joining the league on side, just as he had arrived at Sunderland for an undisclosed fee. John O'Shea, Reading coach a former Premier League and Champions League title winner with 118 caps and one nutmeg of Luis Vigo to his name, John O'Shea, arrived at Sunderland in 2011 with some pedigree. He spent the majority of his seven seasons at the Stadium of Light playing alongside his former Manchester United colleague Wes Brown, but the former England international departed in 2016. Kone was the only defender who made more appearances for Sunderland than O'Shea in the 2016-17 campaign before departing for Reading in 2018. He made 11 appearances for the Royals, retiring on his 38th birthday, and he now works as a first-team coach at the Medeski. Patrick Van Arnholt, Crystal Palace Fantasy Premier League favourite Patrick Van Arnholt joined Sunderland, having been a serial loanee for a number of years at Chelsea. Following two and a half impressive seasons with the club, he was sold for a potential £12 million profit to Crystal Palace in January 2017. That many left midway through Sunderland's relegation season, but he still played more games at left-back than anyone else. The Dutch international has since scored 13 goals in 90 games from fullback for Palace. Didier Ndong, Dijon. Just like Lamine Kone, Didier Ndong joined Sunderland from Lorient in 2016. Ndong's £13.6 million fee, without add ons, made him the club's record signing. Relegated in his debut campaign, Ndong initially stuck around for life in the Championship, but returned to the Premier League with a low move to Watford the following January. He didn't play a single minute of football for the Hornets and returned to a Sunderland side that was now in League One. And Dong and teammate Papa Gillabodji clearly weren't keen to stick around for third-tier football and both did all they could to engineer moves away from the Stadium of Light. 
and Dong's refusal to turn up for training saw him sacked, with his new club reaching settlement terms with Sunderland last January. And Dong left Guangdong in the summer just gone, following their relegation in order to sign for league inside Dijon. Jack Rodwell, free agent. Probably the worst signing Sunderland have ever made, and boy is there some competition, midfielder Jack Rodwell is currently a free agent. The former England international was signed by Gus Poyet for £10 million from Man City in 2014 and handed a lucrative five-year deal with the club. He would stick around for four of them, despite playing just three games in his final season, before agreeing to terminate his contract with the club in June 2018. Rodwell spent last season with Blackburn Rovers, where Tony Mowbray experimented with him at centre-back, but he has been a free agent since leaving Rovers. Sebastian Larsson, AIK Former Arsenal trainee Sebastian Larsson spent six seasons at Sunderland, of which his first season was by far his finest. The Swedish set-piece specialist joined Sunderland on a free transfer from Birmingham City, and he would transition from being a dangerous right-side midfielder to a more conservative central midfielder during his time in the North East. He left Sunderland on a free to Hull City in 2017, where he spent a single season as a regular in the Championship, before returning to his native Sweden. Capped 115 times by Sweden and still going strong now, Larsson currently plays his club football for Swedish champions AIK. Adnan Yanazai, Real Sociedad Adnan Yanazai looked to be a top prospect at Manchester United when he scored twice in his first start as a teenager. That brace actually came against Sunderland, and three years later he signed for the Black Cats on a one-year loan deal. The move saw Yanazai reunited with his former boss David Moyes, but there will be no return to form for the Belgian. He scored more goals in his first United start against them than he did in a season with the club, failing to find the target in 25 Premier League appearances, getting sent off once and picking up an ankle injury. He left the Premier League for good following relegation with Sunderland, joining Real Sociedad on a five-year deal. Yanazai has since shown mixed form for the La Liga side, but is still a part of Roberto Martinez's plans with the Belgian national team. The 24-year-old has won 11 caps for Belgium, with his only goal coming against England at the 2018 World Cup. Fun fact, I once held the door open for him in the toilets at a bar in Portugal. To the best of my knowledge, he didn't say thanks, giving some credence perhaps to the theory that attitude problems have prevented him from realising his true potential. Fabio Barini, AC Milan I don't want to say Fabio Barini is stealing a living at AC Milan, but Fabio Barini is stealing a living at AC Milan. A former Chelsea youth graduate just like Patrick Van Arnholt, Barini joined Sunderland from Liverpool in 2015. He had previously impressed during a season on loan at the Stadium of Light, meaning Liverpool were able to extract an initial £8 million and a potential £10 million from the Black Cats. The season in which Sunderland were relegated, Barini scored just two goals in 26 games. There was a general feeling of disbelief from most when AC Milan came in for him the following summer then, and Barini joined the Italian Giants on a season-long loan deal. He again bagged just two goals in 29 Serie A games this time, which apparently was enough to convince AC Milan into making the deal a permanent one. In fairness to Barini, he has been used very much as a utility player at the San Siro, rather than as an out-and-out centre-forward, but I still think they need to set their heights much higher if they ever want to become a force within the Italian and European game once again. The once-capped Italian international has scored a grand total of 8 goals in 75 games for AC Milan in all competitions. Jermaine Defoe, Rangers the outstanding player to have played for Sunderland over the last few years, Jermaine Defoe scored 37 goals in 93 games for the Black Cats in two and a half seasons with the club. Given Sunderland's play and performances during that time, that would be a remarkable record for any forward in the Premier League, but it was particularly impressive given Defoe's circumstances. Defoe was in his 30s and he joined Sunderland in a swap deal with Josie Altidore from Toronto FC of the MLS. Few expected him to have the second and third most prolific campaigns of his career then, but that's exactly what he did. 15 goals in the 15-16 season kept Sunderland's heads above the water, but the same tally in 16-17 could not repeat the trick. Defoe departed for former club AFC Bournemouth on a free transfer the following summer, but he tended to be used as an impact player in his first season playing under Eddie Howe. The Cherries let Defoe go out on loan in January 2019, linking up with his former England teammate Stephen Gerrard in Scotland. Defoe signed an 18-month loan deal with Rangers, where the 36-year-old has since scored 20 goals in 34 games. That is it for Sunderland's most frequent starting eleven, but we will take a quick look at a handful of other familiar faces. Firstly, manager David Moyes had a pretty miserable 10 months in charge of the club. He oversaw a perhaps somewhat inevitable relegation, but it was still the first of his career and Sunderland's first in a decade, as well as telling a female BBC reporter that she might still get a slap even though she's a woman, after one or two testing questions. 
Moyes has since guided West Ham to survival, having come in as a replacement for Slavan Bilic, but he is currently out of work. Elsewhere, Jason Denier played more games for Sunderland in the 2016-17 season than any other player not in our initial 11, and he's now impressing in France with Lyon. Fullback Javier Manquillo finished up his season on loan at Sunderland, getting relegated, before joining bitter rivals Newcastle United on a permanent deal, and he is still with the Magpies now. Longtime servant and former club captain Lee Catamol, who spent a decade at the Stadium of Light and only left the club in the summer just gone, made an unusual move to Eredivisie's side VVV Venlo in August on a free transfer. Lastly, forward Wabi Kazari has impressed both Ren and Saint Etienne in league on since Sunderland's relegation, and he is Tunisia's talisman at international level. That's it for today's video. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Since you've got this far and in exchange for eternal good luck and happiness, why not subscribe and turn on notifications for the ever brilliant HITC sounds. Also, for mobile users, if you click on your screen now there should be some suggestions of other videos YouTube thinks you might like, and I agree with YouTube. If you're watching on desktop, they should appear of their own accord. Thank you all for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a brilliant day.